What up, everyone? It's your boy FJ coming at you with a video about identifying the unhealthy, underdeveloped INFJ. Signs and symptoms of someone who is of the INFJ personality type who is unhealthy. What are we talking about when we say unhealthy and underdeveloped? We're really talking about one of my biggest problems with Myers-Briggs and with beginners in typology, and I've suffered from the same delusions when I got into it early on, is that typology and figuring out your type is all about, uh, oh, these are my strengths, this is what I'm good at, this is why I'm special, hooray, I'm done. Let me go home and take a load off, no more work to do here. No, that's not the point. That's not why any of this exists. Typology is a tool. It's a tool for uh, self-development and bringing consciousness to the parts of our personality that have been unconscious up to this point. And I'm going to let this very loud helicopter pass by. Let's get right into the signs of an unhealthy INFJ. Introverted intuition, the dominant function of INFJs, is a tricky dominant function to have because it is basically meaning that you are going to be doing a deep dive constantly into your imagination. That's where you're going to like to live. That's going to be your main way of processing and interacting with the world is through the images that you create in your own mind that maybe only make sense to you. Now when you have this so well developed, so overdeveloped, your extroverted sensing, which is the, intro, the inferior function of an INFJ, is going to suffer massively. And extroverted sensing is just being in the real world. This gives INFJs who are unhealthy the appearance of being aloof, and makes them kind of disconnected from the real world. And the, the problem is the, the detriment that this has towards you because you might be like, hey, it's fine if I'm disconnected from reality. Why does it matter? It doesn't hurt anybody. But the problem is that you are generating lots of ideas. A lot of them might be very good ideas that could be useful to other people. Lots of innovative things. Introverted intuition is good at coming up with innovations. Intuition in general, it's the imagination. It's coming up with new things, plans for the future. Seeing a path forward for you and perhaps for the world. And when you're disconnected from reality and you're just sitting up there in your brain all the time, you're gonna to fail to communicate your ideas with anybody. And this is one of the biggest problems of an underdeveloped, unhealthy INFJ is that they're so far in their own head that they, they don't want to communicate anything that's going on up there with anybody. And so I think you need to get over that in order to develop as an INFJ. You need to be willing to open up and share with others the ideas that you're coming up with and the things that you are seeing in your own mind, even though it feels very personal. These these images in our introverted intuition. But in order to grow, we have to learn to communicate these effectively with others for the good of ourselves and for the rest of the world. Let's stop briefly and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial and I'll be back on the other side with more information about unhealthy and undeveloped INFJs. One of the other effects of having inferior extroverted sensation is that a lot of times uh, it can manifest itself in our lives in what could be called a very primitive fashion. Meaning that we, it's that swing effect of holding off something for so long, disrespecting it, that eventually it swings to the opposite side. And so we spend so much time not in reality, just in our minds, disconnected from uh, sense reality, 
that when we finally get into it, when we dip our toe into it, we can just, we can go overboard. And I think INFJs, INTJs also, who have introverted intuition as their dominant function, can be susceptible to overdoing it. Can, uh, and you know what I'm talking about, can, you know, overindulge in sensory pleasures, not know when to stop, maybe. And uh, I think that's just a natural thing for someone who is not used to using it all the time, who isn't using it in a comfortable state. When you are using your extroverted sensation function, I mean, we all have to use it in order to just see where we're walking around, right? To just be able to function in the real world. But when you're actually trying to put yourself into full SE, extroverted sensation mode, we, we just don't know how to handle it. And we can go too far. And it can lead to overeating, drinking too much. Generally, what Jung called being intemperate. Intemperate. Make sure I enunciate correctly. So that's something to watch out for, for an unhealthy or undeveloped INFJ, is spending a lot of time being monk-like and detached from the world and then swinging into these over-the-top times of overindulging in the sensory world. Here's a good one, that an unhealthy or underdeveloped INFJ is going to lack identity. They're going to struggle with who they are. And this is because of having introverted thinking kind of low down there. It's the third function we have. Now, some people have disagreed with me in the past when I've said that introverted thinking is where our identity lies for an INFJ. A lot of people will say, no, introverted feeling is where the identity is. But uh, in my understanding of things, the theory that I subscribe to is that you only have four cognitive functions. And the introverted judging function, which is thinking or feeling, is the place where you make decisions based on the subjective function. When something is introverted, when a function is introverted, that means it's subjective. It revolves around the subject, which is you. So, so for INFJs, that's introverted thinking. It's your subjective decision-making process. When it's objective, extroverted feeling, which we have higher up, which is stronger for INFJs, that's objective. That means that the decision-making process for feeling is revolving around the object, the thing outside of us. We're not looking inward when we're feeling. We're only looking inward when we're thinking. So that's why I say that the identity is there in the introverted thinking for INFJs. And when it's underdeveloped, it can lead you to not really know who you are. Uh, you're not really relying on yourself for decision making and you don't trust your uh, subjective logical process. You, what you trust more is the objective feeling process, looking out at everyone else. And in an extreme form, what that turns into is you looking to everyone else to make your decisions and you probably don't realize you're doing it. You probably think that you're making your own decisions, but unconsciously, you are surveying everyone around you and trying to pick up what decisions should I make based on others rather than the self. So an unhealthy, undeveloped INFJ, when they really think about it, they're going to be like, oh crap, <laughs> I can't trust myself because I don't really know who I am. This can, I think, also lead a lot of INFJs to kind of become uh, is obsessed the right word with their own identity because it's not obvious to them in the way that other types it might be obvious to them. INFJs have to kind of search for it and develop it and it can be difficult when for so long you've been relying on your objective feeling process. So for an unhealthy undeveloped INFJ 
focus a little bit more on introverted thinking, on subjectively using logic to make decisions rather than looking outward. Try to bring some consciousness to the decision-making process. So in that last point, I mentioned how we are always looking outward to see objectively, objectively, as objective as anything can be, what the feelings of others are, extroverted feeling. Now, for some INFJs, they can rely so heavily on extroverted feeling to the exclusion of their introverted judging function that they can, they can feel responsible at all times for the feelings of others, for the emotions of others. Now, feeling is not just emotion. It's a bit more than that, but emotion is included in that. And an unhealthy, undeveloped INFJ is going to feel responsible for other people's emotions. This, uh, in a way, this is synonymous with having no boundaries when it comes to uh, emotional needs because it, it creates this dynamic where if other people if other people want to take advantage of that and take advantage of you uh, if they get upset if they get sad if they get angry and they sense that you always are going to cater to their every need that that's not a good thing feeling responsible for everyone else's emotions all the time basically means that you're never going to look out for yourself and it makes you feel selfish when you say, well, I want to feel good. I don't want to be unhappy, but if I do the thing, if I make the decision that is going to make me feel good, or in other words, if I make the decision that I think is true, that is based on my subjective introverted thinking decision-making process, a decision that I think is good and it makes someone else feel bad, then I can't make that decision. Even if it's the best thing for us, even if we know that, we'll be like, no, I'm responsible for other people's emotions first. Then only after that can I be responsible for doing things that make sense to me. Do you see the problem with that? I think this happens especially with younger INFJs, especially if you were raised in a family where <laughs> the thing about families is over time these patterns develop and it's no one's being conscious about it. But a pattern just develops where one of the children becomes responsible for everyone else's emotions, which doesn't necessarily mean taking care of everyone else, but it's sort of it's just a way of developing where you're making sure that you tailor your behavior so that no one else becomes upset and that if someone is upset you change your behavior until they become not upset any longer. It develops in families and INFJs are going to be the kids in the family who become in a way the emotional What's the word? I, I don't want to say dumping ground. That's a little too far. But INFJs become sort of, they're the emotional barometer for everyone else. And they take it upon themselves to act accordingly to that. Because you'll find, I don't, I don't agree with people who say that personality type is formed by childhood experiences because you'll see three kids in a family together, or more, or less, but you'll see multiple kids in a family who all turned out differently. They have different personality types, even though they had the same family experience. But it depends on what your personality type was. You're born with it. And the INFJ is going to be the one who is like, oh crap, everyone's upset. I need to take care of that. I need to make sure I set this right. You need to learn to just let people be angry. Let them be upset. Let them be sad. You don't have to take care of them. You don't have to make it better. I mean, it's nice if you do, but don't do it to the detriment of yourself.
be it feels selfish when you have extroverted feeling high it feels selfish when you do stuff that makes other people feel bad and it's difficult to go there but you need to learn to develop it you need to develop a little bit of you know live and let die <laughs> to put it in an extreme wording because no Maybe you have other people around you who also have extroverted feeling high and they feel responsible for your emotions, but you can't rely on that. How many people in the world are going to actually feel responsible for your emotions if you're not taking control? Or feel responsible for you and your decisions? You're the one who has to do that. That's how you develop as an INFJ. The next point, I've made a video or two about in my day, which is perfectionism. An unhealthy and underdeveloped INFJ is going to be extremely perfectionistic. And it's not just the kind of... Let me define for you what I mean by perfectionism. And I suggest that you watch my video called INFJ Perfectionist Paralysis. But what it is, is not like, oh, I'm working on this thing, I have to get every detail right, ooh, it's just right, oh, great, now. Oh, I'm such a perfectionist because I, I had a vision and I carried it out exactly. No, that's just being meticulous. Being a perfectionist, overly perfectionist, means you don't do anything because you are afraid of getting it wrong. So when INFJ has these great ideas in their brain, their introverted intuition cooks up these fantastic things, Introverted intuition is, is so disconnected from reality, though, that it's going to come up with stuff that there's no way you can bring it into reality the way it is in your mind. And you know that, and so you don't want to even try to bring it into reality. And when you're such a perfectionist, to an unhealthy degree, as an underdeveloped, unhealthy INFJ, what's going to happen is you're not going to do anything. It goes back to that first point. You're just going to stay in your head. You're not going to try to do anything because you realize the perfection of your mind cannot be translated into the baseness of physical concrete reality. You know, it's very difficult for me even just making videos because in my brain I'm like, ooh, you know, for this video in particular, I, I had all this like cinematic stuff. I thought filming it outside, this is going to be, I'll feel like we're filming Lord of the Rings. I'll have a helicopter shot of me on a mountain. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, but, and then I get out here and I'm like, uh, this isn't what, this isn't the beauty that was in my mind. INFJs are dreamers, first and foremost. And uh, Carl Jung called introverted intuitives like the artist type. Very creative, coming up with all kinds of things, but not always willing to translate it into something that other people can enjoy or, under, or understand, even. And that's the thing you've got to do, is you've just got to get over it. Get over the perfectionist. Just do it. Get it out there. It's not going to be perfect. Doesn't matter. It will never be perfect. There's no, there's no chance. Let's just get it out there. There's no chance of what's up here in your mind coming out perfectly. Just accept it. <laughs> and maybe over time, as you, as you hone in your skills, hone hone your skills. I feel like I said that in a weird phrase. Keep working on bringing those ideas into reality. You'll get better at, better at it and get to a point where you don't care anymore if it's perfect because part of the fun is, is trying. Trying to get it as close as you can. You're going to fail, but it's still fun to get it out there. So as an INFJ, get over it. Get over <laughs> the perfectionism. It's not helping you and it's not helping the world. Another thing about INFJs who are unhealthy and or underdeveloped is that they have this great ability at keeping everyone at arm's length and not letting anyone in. 
Now so far, I've given you enough tips that you can probably put together why, that they are, uh, they're so in their head, first of all, that it's difficult for an INFJ to express anything that other people can find meaningful. The other thing that can contribute to this is extroverted feeling, which on the outside can seem very warm, but maybe doesn't have much substance to it. Extroverted feeling can be seen by many people as being very shallow, because it just has to do with what, what does this moment need? How am I supposed to act right now? Okay, let me do that. Does everyone seem to be happy about this thing? Am I expected to act uh, happy, upset, compassionate in this moment? Okay, that's what I'll do. And that's not, that's not what's going to go through your head consciously. You're not going to think that. You're just going to, you probably think that uh, these feelings just spring up spontaneously from within you. But no, it's because unconsciously you have extroverted feeling. And so that's, that's how you're using it. And for people to get a sense of the real inner you, you kind of have to drop that a little bit. And it can be difficult to do that when you're so used to using it. See, and this is the whole thing, is I've, as I've said just now many times before, is that these processes are going on underneath the surface without you even realizing it. And it takes a lot of time and work for you to see it and to realize what you're doing and to catch yourself and be like, I see what you did there. I see what's happening. So take a look at your interpersonal relationship. Sure, I'm, I'm sure that you have people who you've let in to your life, but a very unhealthy, undeveloped INFJ isn't going to do it very often. And even when they think they're doing it, maybe they're not actually doing it. And they're just letting people in kind of one step. It's like, oh, okay, you got into the vestibule of who I am, but you're not going to get in and see the real me. Because, as I mentioned earlier, in some ways we don't even know who the real us is. You know what I mean? And so when it comes down to it, it can be difficult for us to make sense of that for ourselves. How are we supposed to let other people into that? It's the thing you've got to work on. Work on your identity for yourself and then work up the ability to share it with other people. To go a little bit deeper because INFJs are deep people. That doesn't mean that we let people into our hearts easily. And lastly, this point is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings and make them feel sad and write mean things in the comments and make them smash the dislike button. But the one of the signs of an unhealthy and undeveloped INFJ is that you use being an INFJ as an excuse to never change. This is not a good way of using typology to say, yep, I'm INFJ, that explains everything. I know my strengths and my weaknesses and that's it. And I see it all the time in the comments section where I'll make a video saying stuff that I've said, you know, a little bit of what I've said in this video, touching on things that we're weak at. And I've always, I always get one or two comments that are like, I disagree. I read some website that says INFJ should just focus on what they're good at. They should just focus on maybe developing their extroverted feeling. They should just focus on their NF. They don't need to focus. Why would I focus on what I'm bad at? That makes, that hurts. I don't want to do that. That's uncomfortable. Why should I spend my life banging my head against a proverbial wall of thinking and sensing when that's what I'm bad at? You're wrong, Frank. I shouldn't have to do that. I'm INFJ. That means I should stick with what INFJs are good at. And if that's what you want to do, okay, that's fine. But that's not the point of typology. It's, it's sort of the point of what Myers-Briggs was getting at. Myers-Briggs was about Take this test, now you know what job you should get. So INFJs have a good time being a monk or a hypnotherapist, you know? <laughs> I, see, I just see it all the time. 
people who figure out their INFJ and that's enough for them and that's it. And I can't blame you because personal development and facing the parts of yourself that you struggle with and unconsciously disrespect and realizing, oh my gosh, this is how I interact with the world in this bizarre way. It's not every, every way that people interact with is bizarre if it's over compensated in one area and very weak in another. The point should be to be able to use all of your functions equally, to be strong in all of them so that you're balanced, so that you're conscious, so that you're awake. And yeah, it's painful. It's a journey, it's a process. Some people call it integrating the shadow, where you realize that your, your mind is protecting you from the things that you're bad at and the, you know, your psychological functions that you don't want to use. Your mind is protecting you from it and saying, either saying, you don't need to use those, or saying, yeah, you use those, you're really good at them. In fact, that's probably your type. You're probably a sensing type, dude. I'd probably type myself as a sensing type if I came into this uh, whole typology thing totally uh, free of any associations. If you wiped my brain clean and introduced it to me today, I'd probably say I was a sensing thinking type. Because my brain's trying to protect me. Your ego is created to protect you. You know, it's very, it can be very difficult to all of a sudden realize, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm only, I'm doing that? I've been looking at the world in this one way to the exclusion of this other way. I've really been doing that? Oh man. I make decisions based on what other people feel and I thought I was coming up with it? Wow. That's why I find it a little bit absurd when people try to talk about their, you know, how they process things using their top two functions because how well do you actually see it? Really? How well do you actually see it? <laughs> so sorry, feel free to smash dislike if that offends you, but don't stop using your, uh, let me slap you on the hand, stop using INFJ as an excuse to not grow, to not develop extroverted sensing, introverted thinking. You need to develop those things to be a well-balanced person. It's not bad that you have introverted intuition, but it is bad if you just say, that's all I need for the rest of my life. Maybe you'll get away with it. I'm, lots of people probably get away with just using their dominant function for their whole life, but how much more full and rich and deep could your life be if you go beyond that and develop beyond I'm an INFJ or whatever personality type you are because I'm sure I have lots of people who aren't INFJ watching it. Don't stop at your type. That's not the point. That's not why any of this was started. It was to realize what you're doing unconsciously and then to work on that to bring it to the light thanks for watching I appreciate it make sure you watch some other INFJ videos I have get some more knowledge in your brain smash like if you'd be so kind subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell button and until next time stay cool and attractive <laughs>